Welcome to PHI Public Health Impact. This is the last episode of our second year of broadcasts on the issues that impact on public health. Today, we're going to look at the end of the year, end of the academic year activities for our Masters in Public Health students, the MPH, the backbone of the public health workforce. We're going to see the uh, posters that they presented on their research and the training that they've been doing and graduation where they get their degrees and they go out into the public health workforce where they indeed will have a huge impact on public health. And now we're going to go meet these students of the future leaders of public health of tomorrow. This is Chevis Yeoman, and he's going to talk to us about his research and his internship in a critical field in public health. What department? Epidemiology and Biostatistics. And this is the critical field of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Tell us what you did. So my internship was at Walton Wellness. They're a nonprofit in Walton County, Georgia, about 30 minutes west of here. And they're dedicated to decreasing the incidence and um, the morbidity of cardiovascular disease and diabetes. And so how we did this is we worked with the College of Pharmacy and the College of Public Health, and we put together health screenings all around the county. And we tried to target populations that were at high risk. And so we could not only get them prevented from having these diseases, but also collect data over 10 years' time and see what risk factors were affecting them the most and how we could develop interventions to help decrease the incidence of these diseases. So diabetes and cardiovascular disease, I mean, they're... I mean, they're killing a lot of people, it's, and it's a huge impact on costs and, of course, the, the families that are devastated by this. What kind of impacts do you think you could have this way? So what we did find is, like you said, it is big. You can see in my introduction here that 30% of the deaths and 16 of the hospital discharges were due to just these diseases alone. And what we found in our results is that, like you would think, exercise, um, diet, and uh, obesity are high risk factors for these people. Um, and we actually found higher risk for obesity in this population at Mont County than was expected and is overall in Georgia or the nation. And so what we do is we, we took these results and um, we do interventions, we do bike rides, we do uh, fresh food markets for people that don't have access to foods. Um, we deliver lunches to people. We have farms in the county that we help maintain and we use those vegetables to feed the community as well. Um, also, these screenings, we said they're preventative for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So far, we've screened 151 people, and out of the 151 people, 14 and 6, so 20 people out of the 151, we found were hypertensive or were diabetic, but had not been confirmed by a doctor. They hadn't been to their doctor yet. So we're preventing these diseases from happening as well. So this is the face of public health of the future, preventing disease before it happens. Thank you, Chevis. Well, now we're at the poster of Dinara Jumadilova from Kazakhstan, one of our Masters of Public Health students graduating today. And what department are you in? Health Policy and Management. Yes, all right. And Dinara's poster is part of the Center for Global Health, which is the organization here at the University of Georgia organizing the health-related and public health-related uh, projects, research, and training across the world. And this is certainly one of the best examples I could see of that right here. Why don't you tell us, Dinar, what, what you did in this uh, very interesting uh, overview of an important health issue in Kazakhstan? Well, uh, I think that arterial hypertension is um, a very important disease uh, and cardiovascular diseases uh, uh, take number one place in terms of mortality and morbidity in Kazakhstan and I'm sure uh, almost everywhere in the world. And disease management is a very important issue because it's a chronic disease and in order to reduce the mortality and morbidity uh, rates, we need to take a closer look at disease management, especially in areas like Kazakhstan where the technology resources are limited. But if uh, physician and patient communication is increased and the collaboration from patient side is increased, we can definitely achieve uh, very positive results in terms of reduction of those rates. Well, thank you, Dinara, and uh, this is excellent work and an excellent indication that uh, the world is getting a lot smaller <laughs> than people realize. Thank you, Dinara. Now we enter the field of epidemiology with Kevin Demolga. And what department, Kevin? Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics. That's right. And this is the critical field of cancer, 
one of the most important fields and issues we cover in public health. Why don't you tell us about the what the work that you did, Kevin? Okay, so I did a I analyzed uh, results from a study put on by C, uh, by the CDC. It's called the REACH program, which stands for Racial and Ethnic Approaches to Community Health. And what CDC did was they gave a bunch of communities money to uh, work on issues that ailed each specific community. I looked at the communities that focused on breast and cervical cancer screening as their problem. What they wanted to do was, was increase breast and cervical cancer screening among women in the target age demographics. And so I looked at whether targeted interventions to increase breast and cervical cancer screenings worked in communities that focused on breast and cervical cancer as opposed to communities that didn't focus on breast and cervical cancer. And what I found out was that, indeed, targeting an intervention to a community to focus on increasing breast and cervical cancer screening uptake did increase their uptake of uh, the percentage of women who got screened for breast and cervical cancer. One interesting thing that I didn't know that I did notice is I tried to characterize the, diff the women in the different communities according to demographic, SES, and um, healthy lifestyle behaviors. And the women in the communities that didn't focus on breast and cervical cancer actually got more exercise and ate better than the women in breast and cervical in the communities that focus on breast and cervical cancer. So it's a little bit of you know they eat they eat better, but they're not really getting their screenings done. So we need to find a way to, to you know, merge, you know, marry the two and promote better health overall. Well, that's the way it is in science. <laughs> so we don't often get the results that we expect, but that's why we move forward. Kevin DeMalgo. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. All right. Now we have Robert Kaufman. What department, Robert? Health Promotion and Behavior. And Robert's in the critical field of smoking culture. Smoking is big still in this country. And, the, of course, the accompanying uh, substance abuse approaches uh, with smoking. So what exactly approach did you take, Robert? Um, so we wanted to look at, we talked with the program administrators of these drug treatment centers and we wanted to look at their attitudes towards smoking and smoking cessation and also possibly what was preventing uh, centers from having smoking cessation as well as what allowed them to have smoking cessation programs, things like that. Yeah. And this is a tough field. I mean, we all know that smoking is bad, and we all know that you should be stopping. But the smoking goes on and on. It's really a tough, it's tougher than people realize to intervene and do something about it. So what are you doing? Um, so we were looking at the attitudes, and if you look, you'll see that a lot of the administrators are starting to take a more positive attitude towards smoking cessation and a more negative attitude towards smoking in general. But I think one of the problems, as we see on this poster, is that it's hard for them to get funding for, that's a major problem, I think, is that it's hard for them to get funding towards the smoking cessation programs. And also, a lot of the times what we hear in the interviews is that they're afraid that if they have smoking cessation and they don't allow their patients to smoke, that they'll start losing patients. Hopefully, part of what we're doing is when we talk to them about smoking cessation, it gets them started thinking about it, and maybe that it's something that they need to start doing or at least look into. We've actually had a couple centers that as part of the reward that we pay them for participating in the study have used that to buy smoking cessation materials. So we're starting to see at least that we're making some sort of a difference with the study as well. Well, this is a war, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a war on smoking. And uh, this is the man in the front line trenches in health promotion behavior, Robert Kaufman. Thank you. Now we turn to Liz Wilson. And I have to tell you now that Liz was behind the scenes really for this show Public Health Impact for this entire year. All 14 episodes of our second year of Public Health Impact were with Liz writing the scripts, doing the production uh, values, uh, getting things organized. I, I really want to thank you for that, Liz. Oh, and, uh, my pleasure. And I, unfortunately, she's leaving, at least for now. Uh, she's going to get her MPH, going to go on with a PhD, which is what we like to see. Uh, Liz, what department? Health policy and management. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the work that you're doing in St. Lucia? All right. Well, my work focused on um, well, global health, you're right, and also gerontology. So what I did was look at um, aging among healthcare providers because it's been found that, you know, ageism is rampant in healthcare just because the healthcare workers are exposed to so many older people with chronic issues and problems. So I looked at that among four institutions in St. Lucia. Um, so we looked to see what the um, aging-related attitudes were among the healthcare providers. And um, also for the other global health side, what 
what I did was we interviewed 500 people. We looked at the incidence of metabolic syndrome on the island and what the normal BMI is to see what the predictors for chronic disease in future years would be. Okay, so what you know, a, a point we're making in public health, and this I love this project because it combines two areas in one, gerontology and global health. But we find that we have some of the same problems. Uh, some of the same problems here in the United States Absolutely. are also in St. Lucia, and the solutions are similar. Absolutely, and also it's even more important, you know, for a developing country like St. Lucia to our middle-income country to focus on these problems before they become huge out-of-control issues because, you know, the finances, the resources we have are very limited, so it's um, imperative to get a jump on it and get, you know, get started early. Well... I tell you, this is a sad one for me <laughs> to see you graduating and also leaving public health impact. But uh, in addition to getting certificates in gerontology and global health, she's going to get one in disaster management next year I with will. us. So, <laughs> yeah, it's important in public health to be very heterogeneous in the training because public health is cross disciplinary. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank you. My okay. Pleasure. All right. Now we're with Drew Kilday, who's also getting his master's in public health today. Uh, what department are you in, Drew? Health Policy and Management. All right. And this field is generally the area of preventive health or preventive medicine with sports medicine. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about this, uh, this project that you did. Okay. Well, what I did was I did a systematic liter literature review about um, all the hockey injuries that are currently going on. Um, there's a big increase in the injury rate. So what I did was looked at the different mechanisms that cause injuries. And then I try to see if there's any sort of prevent, preventive measures that we could improve um, in terms of rules and regulations to help decrease the injury rates in the, in the leagues currently. Well, and so that is really one of the fundamental aspects of public health then, is preventing injuries before they occur. And it certainly looks like they have them in hockey, <laughs> okay? Well, what we found was there, there's a number of different things that really added to injury rates. Um, the, there's definitely an effect on equipment. Um, Players who use full facial protection as opposed to half face shields definitely have a lower increased rate of injury. There's also a rate, um, a difference in positions. Um, there's difference in uh, gender. There's also a difference in the rink size. Um, so what we found was there's a number of things that can be improved to help hockey players and will keep them safer as they're playing the sport. And, so. and that's what we would rather do is rather than treating people after they're injured, we'd rather prevent it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Drew Kilday. All right, we're now here with Barrington Harvey, who's uh, get, just about to get his MPH, his Master's in Public Health. Uh, what department are you in, Barrington? I'm in the Environmental Health Safety Department. Okay, and so this is about the protection of the environment, right? Yes, um, I actually got to do a poster with Wes Kolar of the Environmental Health Safety Division here in UGA, um, and uh, it was a great opportunity. My One of my goals, ultimately, is to be a part of an organization that will help you know, aid in the, in, the, in the safety of human lives through uh, safety and environmental uh, practices. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you did. You did an internship with mm -hmm. environmental safety. Yes, um, I worked with Wes Kolar of the ESD, and basically what we did was uh, we went into uh, laboratory environments, went into restaurant environments, uh, even a hotel environment, and inspected, you know, did normally what a health inspector would do is you know look over things, make sure everything was up to par. Um, in a laboratory setting, we make sure that the hazardous wastes were disposed of properly. Um, in addition, we uh, we followed up with some EPA audits, um, which were uh, just to make sure that the wastes were labeled, they're in the right place within the laboratory, um, that spills were being uh, taken care of properly. Uh, so those were just a few few of the things we did. I also was able to get a NIMS compliant National Incident Management certified right. um, and also I was able to uh, get a fire safety training in, in the process as well. So, Well you got a lot of training. I, I trained also in environmental health science when I came up in public health and so what you're looking at here is the backbone of the protection of the environment and of human safety. Thank you Barrington. Thank you. Now we're at the poster of Daniel Higgins, MPH candidate in health policy and management. And I have to tell you, Daniel's worked with me for the last, well, two and a half years now in my institute. Um, and Daniel, who's this guy? Uh, this is uh, Ben Warren. He helped me uh, program the 
the website that we created. Okay. Now, Daniel is also in the Institute for Health Management and Mass Destruction Defense, one of two institutes within the College of Public Health, along with gerontology. Now, Daniel, tell us uh, what you did here. Uh, I can tell you that Daniel was part of a uh, ASPR, Assistant Secretary Preparedness Response Grant, where we do all of the hospital exercises for the state of Georgia. And Daniel, tell us what your part was here, this critical part in development for how we handle all of these hospital exercises. Yeah, well basically when we do hospital exercises, we have multiple evaluators that evaluate the exercises and um, sort of list off strengths and opportunities for improvement for each uh, exercise. The process to go through them and to find, you know, consistencies and eliminate redundancies and come up with a finalized after action report takes a lot of time. So basically what we created was an electronic uh, program that will um, take all these evaluator reports and combine them and make them a lot simpler and more efficient to sit through and save the Institute a lot of time. And this is an example of young people taking command. This is now the approach that will be used with all 150 hospitals in the state of Georgia in order to bring them up to a high level of preparedness for the kinds of events that we expect are coming in this state. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is another picture of the public health workforce of tomorrow. Thank you, Daniel.
We're here with Dr. Katie Hine, who is the undergraduate coordinator for the bachelor's degree in health promotion. Katie, how many uh, students, undergrad students, are graduating here today? I think we have about 100 students. Wow, that's, yeah, is that a pretty a large class? It's a pretty good sized class, yes. And what words of wisdom do you have for these students as they walk out the door into this great big world of public health? Um, I, I like the wisdom of don't panic and be yourself. Remember, you really do know what you're doing. You have a good education behind you. And follow your passion. That's the most important thing. Do what you really want to do. Great, thank you. We're here with Dr. Joel Lee, who is the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. Joel, how many um, graduate students do we have graduating today? We're celebrating the graduations of approximately 70 graduate students. Over 60 are completing their Master of Public Health degree, along with several students who are completing the DRPH Doctor of Public Health degree, as well as the PhD Doctor of Philosophy degree. And um, I know you've been instrumental in advising many of these graduate students throughout their time here at UGA. What kinds of advice are you giving them for their future? As I speak to students, I remind them of the opportunities that are identified in the public health oath that they will recite as part of the ceremony today. And what kinds of positions um, should these public health students expect to get? Well, we're excited. Our students go into a variety of positions, both in the public sector and the private sector. On the public side, they work in local health departments, in state agencies, in federal agencies, including the Centers for Disease Control. In the private sector, there are a variety of positions, depending on the discipline they've completed as part of their degree. Great. Thanks so much, and congratulations. It's my pleasure. We're here with Liz Wilson, who's been our production assistant for the last two years. And on behalf of Cham and I and our production crew, we want to say thank you so much to Liz for all of her hard work. And Liz, tell us what exciting things are coming for you next. Well, first, let me say that it's been an absolute pleasure working with you and Dr. Dallas and Janet and everybody on the crew. So it was my absolute pleasure. Thank you. And then next. I am actually going to be pursuing a PhD in health promotion and behavior right here at the University of Georgia. Awesome. Go dogs, and we're glad you're going to be here with us for a few more years. I am thrilled to be here again. Go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we're here with Phil Williams, the Dean of the College of Public Health. Dean Williams, how excited are you today? I'm very excited. Uh, this is our eighth graduating class, and it has grown from five the first year in 2005 to about 150 today. So it's just um, it's just a great time to see it um, evolve from something that was very small to what you can see here today. And tell me about some of the uh, recent accomplishments in the College of Public Health. Well, we have a wonderful group of students, as I think you you saw today. We have students from all over the world. We have students from really all over the United States. We have a number of Fulbright scholars. Uh, we represent pretty much everywhere and that's what we want to do in public health. And I'm excited about the fact that not only are we growing and not only are we improving in quality, but we're moving to a new campus, the Health Science Campus over uh, next to Athens Regional where the Navy Supply School used to be located. And uh, we'll be about 80% of that campus once we move in. And it's just uh, really a good time to be in the College of Public Health. Well, congratulations for another great year. Thank you. I'm here with Dr. Brenda Fitzgerald, who is our keynote speaker for today's graduation event. And she is the commissioner of the Department of Public Health and the state health officer. I'm so glad you're here with us. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's absolutely a pleasure and an honor. So my first question for you is, how important is it for a land-grant university such as the University of Georgia to have a school of public health? It is enormously important because a, your university is dedicated to the health of the people of the entire state of Georgia. That means all 159 counties, all 18 health districts, and we need your kind of leadership and commitment and academic knowledge everywhere in the state of Georgia. So what is the importance for you for being here today? I think that the most important thing we can do today is have public-private partnerships. The problems we face, such as childhood obesity, are too large to be solved by one entity. But if we have those partnerships, like the academic partnership, the academic partnership with your College of Public Health and the practical knowledge that comes from the Department of Public Health, we can do incredible things together that we could never do by ourselves.
You just gave a wonderful presentation to the graduates, and we heard a little bit of it already on, on the show, but I'm wondering if you can summarize what was your, what was your overall message? Uh, my overall message um, is that public health is really the science that increases knowledge of our understanding of the situation. And these students today are the future of increasing health in the entire state of Georgia and entire, in the entire nation for the future. Um, I think their dedication to do that is unique among all the sciences. Most of things look at, most of sciences and most university uh, endeavors look deeply into a single subject. Public health is the horizontal look. That means they connect the pieces, they connect the dots, they make sense of the variety of things that's going on around us. So that's an enormously important discipline. Thank you for all the work you're doing for our state. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, in this episode, we got to see poster day for our MPH students, and we just saw the wonderful graduation ceremony for all of our 2012 College of Public Health graduates. And so we wanna say congratulations to them and we'll see you next season on Public Health Impact, PHI.